Good afternoon, YouTubers. This is Tech Sergeant Mackey. I'm down in Conneaut Harbor. And we are watching the Walter J. McCarthy as it starts to back into Conneaut Harbor. And here the, uh, the port is kind of noisy and busy in the background with everything getting ready for the ship to come in. And fortunately, Lake Erie is nice and calm right now. There's just very much a light breeze. Current temperature in Kania is 53 degrees. However, down here on the water, it is a little bit cooler. It's running at 50. And uh, so lake, lake temperature is off of Kania is currently a uh, steamy 42.3 degrees. Lake Erie uh, is nice and calm today with the waves at two feet or less right now and uh, forecasted to even subside to one foot or less over the evening. It's a nice calm day on the lake which is not as typical for this time of year. A uh, little bit about the McCarthy as it made its journey all the way here from Duluth, Minnesota from Lake Superior, going through the Sioux Locks, down the St. Mary's River to Lake Huron, to the St. Clair River, to Lake St. Clair, through the Detroit River and into Lake Erie, and now over here on the, into the central basin of Lake Erie to, to Conneaut to deliver its load of iron ore. You can see there's, uh, Conneaut Harbor is always just filled with a lot of wildlife. Uh, today's no different a lot of uh, different birds out I can see a lot of different types of ducks and loons and of course our uh, um, ever-present Canadian geese are always around here and we have blackback galls that are also in abundance uh, Conneaut Harbor is also known for having a lot of eagles and osprey down here so it's not unusual, especially on a nice day like today, to see uh, both of those out here fishing. And if I do end up seeing any, I will pan over to them. Now there's other people down here watching the ship too. You see right there, that just flew in front of us. That was a loon. And this is this is actually a treat because it's usually always windy down here and uh, winds are nice and calm and you can hear just a slight ripple of the water so it's actually very peaceful and you can hear the sounds of the trains in the background and kind of it's just filled with a uh, one of the things we're noted for is uh, we have three different railroad lines two train stations so one thing that is a constant in this area is trains now some of the history of this sh ship and its statistics the Walter J McCarthy is one of the Giants it is a uh, 1,000 feet long and uh, 1,000 or 105 feet wide at the beam and uh, it is one of the 13, one of the 13 thousand foot plus ships on the Great Lakes, the Giants. This uh, ship is just a huge carrying capacity of 80,900 tons. And say this ship is filled with iron ore. This ship uh, was built in 1977, started service there and has had pretty smooth sailing most of the time in its long career. It uh, had an incident, however, in 2000, 2008, I believe it was, it hit a submerged object in Superior Harbor, Wisconsin, and it cut a 
seven by four inch gash into the hull and flooded the engine room and the ship pretty much sank, but it was only 20 foot, 20 feet deep. So it hit, did touch bottom and uh, it cost $4.7 million to repair. Also another 4.2 million loss of business in getting the ship repaired and uh, it's loss of time for revenues while it was getting repaired to which the American Steamship Company that owns this here they had to sue to be recoup those costs and they won it was an 8.9 million dollars to recoup the cost of both repair and loss of business again because this thing can carry massive loads um, it's also used in carrying uh, coal <coughs> and uh, limestone. However, most of the time it has been, as of late, it's been doing iron ore runs. So, apologize a little bit, a little scratchy. It is allergy season, and uh, that's hitting me. Hits me hard, always. So it is a nice peaceful scene down here. Now, one of the other things that happened, this tra tragedy uh, struck the McCarthy when it was on Lake Michigan after it had just left the port of Gary, Indiana. Uh, a crew member was injured in an incident on board the ship and while they were trying to get emergency transit to get him the medical care he needed. He died in transit. Um, so the ship has had a fatality. The shipping industry is definitely a dangerous one. Uh, this ship has actually overall fared pretty well and had very few reported incidences. I'm sure there's always some things. Uh, by trying to look up the history on it for its accidents and there's not a lot which is that's good that must mean it has a good safety record now for Conneaut Harbor ships have to come they they pull up to the entrance and then they back in and uh, this is carrying iron ore. It will back in over to the east side of the docks to unload its iron ore. The west side of the dock is for the limestone. Uh, they used to have a coal dock, but it is no longer in service. So uh, that was put out of business by the Obama regime. Real quiet and peaceful down here, which is a treat. Last ship I tried to video here, we had some rough winds. I did get an update on the Roger Plow. And while they haven't officially said it's gonna be scrapped, they're, they have pulled the electronics uh, from, from it and it is look, looking like it's awaiting being scrapped. That is, uh, right now, unless something changes their official opinion, they are going to start to scrap the ship, which is very sad news. I was hoping maybe it wouldn't. Now, I do want to do some, uh, answer some questions from uh, viewers and subscribers. Which, first of all, I want to say to you guys, like, subscribe, and share on this. Please subscribe. I need uh, more subscribers to be able to get this channel monetized and as a current only 14% of my viewership actually subscribes so I would greatly appreciate it you'd be helping me out a lot if you do subscribe so one of the questions I'm always asked by one of the viewers wherever I'm at is uh, what facilities there are and uh, so to uh, answer that question down here in the harbor there 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 is a bathroom down here uh, that is accessible to the public however I am NOT going to video that 
One of the other questions I was asked is, am I armed when I am doing my videos? And my answer is not only 100% yes, am I armed when I'm doing my videos? I'm armed all the time. I'm, I have a gun by me when I take a shower. So I'm a four-time combat veteran, 20 years in the Air Force, and also a 22-year uh, corrections officer. Uh, I, I stay armed pretty much no matter what because I know it's a dangerous world out there. So, um, and uh, I do keep up to date on my training and use of uh, self-defense tactics and avoidance of situations. As the best the best victory for a battle that you can get is the one that you didn't have to fight. Let's zoom out there a little bit on that. You can see our historical lighthouse in the background. No longer in operation other than it does have a, it flashes red. ducks going by it, it's beautiful the scenery on this here is phenomenal <coughs> excuse me because I am having a lot of allergy troubles today but this is the stuff that like I say I love to do and uh, I love being able to get out here and do these videos um, I will be having more and more different kinds. I would appreciate if you could drop anything that you have, questions, comments, drop them into the comment section there. What you thought of this video, what other types of videos you'd like to see in the future. Um, I know a lot of you guys like the night hikes and I do like those too, those are more interactive. Uh, but I also love uh, some of the stuff down here at Lake Erie and uh, the Great Lakes because it is just it's part of the beauty of the area and uh, for me this is this is fun this is enjoyable it's as, as enjoyable as my hikes in the woods so that's why I like I enjoy sharing this with you guys because this is uh, definitely a thing of, of beauty and I hope that I'm able to capture the moment enough that you feel like you're standing here with the cool breeze of the water and uh, just the sounds the sounds of all the equipment there's a lot going on over here in the harbor there's other people down here watching these the ship come in because this is really a fascinating sight even though they come in here often and the Walter J McCarthy is uh, no stranger to this port it's still fun to watch even if it's the same ship I've seen a dozen times it's still just a fascinating amazing thing to me so if you stood this ship up a thousand foot long it would be taller it would be taller than most buildings <laughs> most skyscrapers this thing is just enormous and uh, another thing that's a report the, the biggest ship they call it the Queen of the Great Lakes I, I say King because they gave it a man's name the, the Paul Tregurtha uh, has not been able to start any of its business yet as it is undergoing a lot of repairs and is still currently sitting in uh, Superior Wisconsin and it is going undergoing a lot of repairs and that is the largest ship on the Great Lakes at 1,013 feet long but it unfortunately is still not ready for service so this uh, the ship uh, made it down here at a, 
uh, a, had pretty smooth sailing for most of its trip. And uh, unlike uh, the last ship had all kinds of trouble getting here, delays, this ship has been smooth sailing and has actually made it ahead of schedule. stuff going on over in the harbor in the background some heavy machinery over and over here they're moving moving around there's trucks and uh, big uh, bulldozers in the back around moving around and there's also some trains that are positioning in the harbor uh, train cars and so you may hear some of that sound in the back. I can, I'll pan over just a second here and show you. We have that getting ready to load a truck. stormy night last night uh, thunderstorms that came in the evening after a beautiful day and uh, we have today has been peaceful and calm uh, we do have uh, more rain in the forecast coming ahead late tonight and into the weekend also this weekend for any of you Buckeye fans, the spring, Ohio State spring game will be this Saturday. And even though I'm a Michigan Wolverine fan, I plan on attending. I'm gonna go there and have a good time watching that. I don't know, I may try to see if I can get some videos in the shoe. I think that's a, a fascinating stadium. One of the largest in college football. Not as big as the big house in Michigan, but it's still a big one. And it is a historic too, it's an older one. Hear the you can hear the engines of the McCarthy as it's slowly backing in and uh, these guys are doing these guys are professionals these guys are doing a quick job of this they're actually going a lot quicker than I thought they would this gets closer you can just see the enormous size of this because I am currently where I'm standing I'm a little over a football field away put it in perspective maybe 150 yards maybe 200 maybe maybe a little yeah not much more than that maybe 160 yards off so I'm up pretty pretty close to that And uh, I can't zoom in all the way to fit the ship in because this is, this this thing is huge. It's 
surprisingly haven't seen any of the eagles down here yet. Usually you'll find them that will usually hang out over on the large uh, mounds of limestone. But today I'm not I'm not seeing any. I'm sure they're around here somewhere. This area here, Conneaut, is one of the most phenomenal fishing areas on the Great Lakes. The Conneaut Creek and off of Lake Erie, Lake Erie here. This is very good walleye and perch fishing. You also, uh, into the Conneaut Creek and into the harbor, um, are able to find northern pike musky especially during the warm parts of the summer on the east side of Conneaut over near Turkey Creek there is a uh, sturgeon nesting ground sturgeon as you know are the largest fish in the Great Lake and so there's a lot of uh, particular types called a rock sturgeon these things are giants these, these things uh, rock sturgeon get up to seven over seven feet long The biggest, uh, the biggest fish ever caught on Lake Erie or in the Great Lakes was a sturgeon that was in the Detroit River. This is another area where they, a lot of the sturgeon like to hang out in the Detroit River. And they actually caught one that was over, it was over nine feet long and over 900 pounds. These uh, giant fish were known, uh, that's really where the tails of the Lake Erie monster came from because these things were known to go up and bump small boats and uh, they look they literally look like a dinosaur they're scaly with spikes on the uh, on their spine and uh, they're more predominant over in the western basin. However, they are over here in the central basin. Lake Erie is divided into three basins. The western basin is the largest. Uh, eastern basin is the deepest. And the western, that western basin is the shallowest. And that's over near Toledo and Detroit. And the McCarthy is just about to enter the mouth of the Conneaut Creek. literally has a thousand feet to go. So do drop questions in here. I, I, I greatly appreciate it. Anything you have or comments on this. Again, I don't, I love doing the hiking videos, but that's not all I, that's not all that I do. Um, I'm outdoors, you know, it's like, and it's mostly just the experience of uh, all the beauty outdoors in Lake Erie is one of the most, to me, one of the most beautiful places. Uh, and fortunately, that's where I call home. Some other uh, fishing that is very good and prevalent in the Conneaut Creek and uh, Lake Erie over here in this harbor. Uh, Smallmouth and largemouth bass, very good fishing for them. And also in this area over here, channel catfish. Very prevalent. There's actually some pretty large ones around here. You see with all the uh, all the water birds over here, these ducks and these loons. Um, 
it's one of the reasons we have a lot of them here it's one of the reasons why we have the uh, northern pike here northern pike love to eat these things especially the babies it's kind of a scary thought a northern pike can get up to six feet long and they're basically a freshwater barracuda Birds are hooping it up over here. There's a lot of those. a lot of those are a lot of seagulls making most of the noise there. I know from the Finding Nemo, they they accurately depict what seagulls are like, as they say. All they hear them say is "mine, mine, mine." That's pretty much uh, what a seagull does. I do want to also give uh, an update on one of my videos, my uh, investigation at the Indian Mound Park at night. I had one of my pictures there. Uh, a observant viewer was able to blow up and say, hey, those weren't deer, something that I thought was deer. They blew up the picture and uh, actually showed that they were uh, I posted them on my page. I got varying opinions of what people thought they were, but nobody thought they were deer. And uh, I had it sent in to some professionals who sent it back and said, you have a couple of bobcats there. And they seen they were busy hunting the deer. So I thought that was a great catch, a great catch to one of the viewers. That's why I love doing those. They're interactive. You guys catch things that I miss. And, uh, but it's just cool to think that I was over there kind of taunting them, whistling at them and everything. It was bobcats. Uh, they didn't make a sound. So that's why I thought they were, I guess I thought they were deer. I don't like to sensationalize anything in those videos. So um, it, it, it's interactive, but it's literally, you know, it is what it is. If there's nothing there, there's nothing there. I don't like to, and I don't like to, try to make something out to be something that's not so I literally I I said oh th those must be deer and then I looked at them and go wait I don't think that and I just I couldn't tell what they were so I said they must be deer because I don't I do not I don't fake anything I don't like to sensationalize it at all but an observant viewer was able to get a closer look at them and uh, so I got to do some of my shout outs now, I've had some listeners from New Zealand, Sweden, and uh, United Kingdom as of late. And I want to say thank you to all of them. Alan, it's another one. Thank you for watching, Alan. Uh, my production manager and assistant production manager, Madeline and Adeline, who are in Oklahoma and some of my other fans from around there um erica that's the one who likes to know whether there's a bathroom every place and kaylin kayla braley hattie i say thank you to all you guys for watching if there's anybody's name i miss drop in the comment if you want in there um some other people's uh uh, Suzanne, that was uh, from the United Kingdom, also, and uh, any of my all of my uh, subscribers and fans that watch locally, say thank you guys. If you do want to be put in the video, a shout out, comment, let me know. So 
it is an absolutely peaceful day down here in Conneaut Harbor. Again, drop a comment in here. Tell me what you thought. Uh, your input is very valuable to me. So if there's something else you'd like to see videos of, different types of places, put those in the comments. I do value them and do try to uh, get those. One of the comments that I had is they wanted to see stuff, uh, hikes at night on the railroad tracks. And I was able to do that one. I've also done some poles on the places to go and the one that was uh, voted number one I did the video there and same thing with uh, what, what hit as number two did a video there as well and we'll be getting to some of the other places that were on that list and uh, I've had uh, some people suggest and I don't know but I, I get them seem to be getting a mixed reaction on this is cemeteries now I've done some videos in some cemeteries at daytime uh, I, I kind of enjoy I enjoy some of that the historical stuff with the cemeteries some people have suggested going in there at nighttime now I got a preference I'm not a ghost hunter but I will walk through a cemetery at night and whatever you see is whatever you see So if you do want to see that, I will I will be putting a poll up later today to uh, to uh, see some other types of videos that you guys would like to see, and uh, I will try to accommodate those. So look forward, look on my community, the community part of my channel. I do post pictures of different things on there, and. I put interactive polls. I, I like to know what you guys like, what you guys don't like, what you guys want to see, what you don't want to see. The ship is cleared. It's all the way in Conneaut Creek and is going to back up a little further as it positions itself to, to the dock on the east side of the Conneaut Creek where we'll then start to has the self unloader technology and we'll start to unload its iron ore which will then be put onto rail cars and shipped down to Pittsburgh to the steel mills along the CN Railroad so I do like I do videos I do like historic stuff uh, into America, I'm very into American history, uh, the history of my area in particular. I love the finding the beauty and the nature of it, so it's like I am pretty much like an outdoor type of person. The so ship is all, all the way in. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me in a beautiful day in Conneaut Harbor. Like, subscribe, and share. And comment on this. Thank you for watching, and God bless you. Have a wonderful day.